Welcome back, everybody. Right now, it's time for the Executive Edge. We're focusing this morning on a race to find a vaccine for coronavirus. Eunice Yoon is here. She joins us with more from a lab in China that just got the green light to start clinical trials. And Eunice, I have missed you. It is good to see you, my friend. Oh, it's great to see you, too. Uh, there are actually three Chinese companies that have vaccines in clinical trials. And one of them, Nasdaq-listed Sinovac, um, has already started injecting volunteers. Chinese businessman Yin Wei Dong is at the forefront of the fight against the global pandemic. This week, his company, Nasdaq-listed Sinovac, got approval from China to start clinical trials for its coronavirus vaccine. A vaccine shouldn't be for a certain country or area, he says. It should be for the globe. His team is using an older method to develop the vaccine than other companies, but that he thinks is safer. Called an inactivated vaccine, it uses a virus killed by chemicals. The vaccine is being tested at this lab and will be checked again before going into clinical trials. The company says that 100 volunteers are being recruited for the first phase and that doses of various sizes are being prepared. Yin is targeting to finish trials for safety and efficacy in June and then test the vaccine in infected areas in China or overseas. That's faster than normal, he says. And the Chinese government has made finding a vaccine a priority. The authorities here have allocated land for mass production. Uh, they've also expedited the approval process. So the company uh, Sinovac said that instead of the usual six months, it's only taken them one month to get the approval for human uh, clinical trials. And uh, also uh, the government here uh, is allocating a lot more money. Uh, for this effort. In fact, uh, the company said that it's received tens of millions of dollars or tens, yeah, tens of millions of dollars for this company alone and that the, that the government is matching the investment dollar for dollar. Hey, Eunice, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what life is like there in Beijing at this point. I'm looking at the traffic behind you and it's definitely more traffic than we used to see behind you. But what is it compared to what normal life would be? It's, uh, it's getting better incrementally. So uh, we are seeing a lot more people at the shops, um, uh, many more people venturing out to uh, go to the, to the restaurants, uh, much more traffic, as you've noted, uh, behind me. But um, we also see the government putting in place some very stringent measures. So uh, not only uh, do we have to still go through the temperature checks and making sure that we, um, you know, that, that we are um, always uh, uh, using hand sanitizer at different places, Places, but also uh, there are uh, more health codes and ways in which our privacy is, is being impinged on. So um, to, for me to get into a, a restaurant to, to a different location, you have to scan a, a barcode just to get into the building. And then you have to scan another barcode to, to get into the restaurant. And so we're seeing a lot of different other measures that uh, make it feel like it's not really normal, even though we're trying to get business back to normal over here. What does the barcode tell the restaurant that you that you've passed some health check or something? Yeah, so there are two different barcodes um, that restaurants and businesses are using. One of them is uh, one for health to check on your health status, and then the other one is uh, to see where you've gone. So you have to sometimes prove to a restaurant that you've been, for my, in my case, in Beijing for the past 14 days. So you give your mm. you give um, access to the uh, you know the the mobile phone company to sh to show that I in fact have been in Beijing, and then the restaurant will look at that. And uh, so on the one hand, it's good because you think, okay, it's another measure that makes sure that everybody around me is, is clear of the coronavirus. On the other hand, it's kind of scary because you, know, you have to keep uh, giving up, you know, your own uh, privacy and, and what your whereabouts and information about yourself uh, as you uh, tr go about your day.